Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market, and boy, is today crazy, nutty, volatile. If you woke up this morning and just kind of looked at your phone or looked at the news, you go, what? The Dow Jones is down right now. Ah, only 905 points. It's recovered by 100 points. It was down 1,000 earlier, so your 401ks are getting hammered. Market's in a tizzy. Iran says it's going to bomb the living daylights out of Israel. That'll cause problems with the Strait of Hormuz, oil prices. If you're waiting for real estate to crash, is this your defining moment? The canary in the coal mine. <laughs> we're going to go over what's going on, and then we're going to take a look at, well, then let's see what numbers we need to keep an eye on and, uh, and see what's going on. So the first thing I want to take a look at right here is the wonderful... Dow Jones Industrial Average, and we're going to start getting into real estate and what I'm seeing. And one of the things that uh, that we're seeing is that the Bank of Japan raised their rate uh, this morning or last night. So their Monday morning, we were sleeping. They've been at negative interest rates forever, and they went up to like 025 well, it rattled the markets. They don't let anybody know they're going to do this in advance. Everybody woke up this morning and... Uh, and they're trying to strengthen the yen, and uh, we're trying to save our dollar. Our dollar's still up like a 35-year high versus their yen. So they made an adjustment, and uh, it's freaking everybody out. So the United States is not the only one that has a declining stock market today. It's global. So what happens next? Well, the 10-year treasury, which is if I would just move my mug here, let me get that out of the way. And move it here. And that, that doesn't make it much better. Let, let me try this. There we go. Okay. See that dip down? That's the yield. And mortgages tend to follow the 10-year yield. So you can expect to see lower mortgages tomorrow morning versus what we're seeing on the, uh, on the average that you see down below on my little ticker. And we're seeing uh, 17,700 listings. Remaining about the same. Going to show you that once again. Um, and then 2,500, 2,100 new, 2,100 new listings, 2,500 contracts. But here's the interesting thing I put down below there. Canceled listings jumped by 200 units this week. Not because of the news that we're seeing today. So I'm going to watch that and see how that shakes out. So basically 750 people said, tried to sell my house, didn't work, take it off the market. There's no desperation out there. So they aren't saying, well, let me lower, 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 lower the price. I got to get rid of this house. They basically said, eh, take it off. We'll take another run at it later. We'll see what happens here. We've got a comment that says we're starting that rapid drop I mentioned in the comments last week. We're not seeing it in sales prices yet. Uh, the rapid drop uh, in real estate prices has not occurred yet. Now, there is a lot of anxiety out there. This is what's called the VIX. And this is a measurement here in the official description right here. It says it's a ticker symbol and the popular name for the Chicago Board Options Exchange CBOE Volatility Index, a popular measure of the stock market's expectation of volatility based on the S&P 500 index options. See how it spiked up today? Last time it went up, 2008, before that, 2020 doesn't mean that everything's going to implode but it means there's going to be a lot of volatility there's going to be a lot of up and down now just a few days ago we were all commenting that well fed's leaving things alone not going to change things until september maybe they should have cut rates now we're sitting back and going well are they going to have an emergency meeting and come in and cut rates now um, so that's kind of where the week's news is going to be. And we've had some local news here that's kind of disturbing, and that is that Intel is announcing that they're going to lay off 15% of their workforce. And I saw a news story that said they're laying off 15,000 people. Get the numbers right. Um, it's 15%. It's actually about 17,000 people. So, uh, But, you know, they're the largest manufacturer in Chandler. So, you know, that, that could bite. Um, so, and, uh, and so we got a clarification here, rapid drop in stock market will lead to lower rates. Oh, I couldn't agree more. 
Absolutely. And we're seeing that in the 10-year treasury lay that just popped up. So Intel, they have not announced how many cuts they're going to have in Chandler. They're still expanding that plant. You can see the size of it here. Uh, they've got, and they got $8 billion from uh, the treasury in uh, in what they call the CHIPS Act. So I don't know. That's uh, kind of an interesting thing. Another comment here, it says, so this this means home prices will skyrocket in price. I'm going to take a look at that. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, and, I'll, and there'll be a couple of reasons why I say that. One, let me, let me just go to that right now since I teed that up. I don't see rates exploding or home prices exploding um, simply because we've already got an affordability wall. And there's another stat out there. The survey that came out that said that over 30% of potential buyers, 33%, said they're going to wait until after the election. Now, you've heard my view on that. It's like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. I get it. You're just nervous. We've never seen the trend in real estate change because of which party got elected. So I don't know what you're waiting for, except people are just anxious and they have anxiety. So this is added to anxiety. Um, if the market tanks, if the economy goes into a major recession and rates really drop, people quite honestly won't be in the mood to purchase real estate. And, uh, and they'll sit on their hands, I think, some more. We saw that in 2010, 11, 12, 13, and 14. No, nope, not getting in. I'm just too nervous about it. And we can see here that the Crawford Market Index has shown um, some declines only a couple markets, Maricopa and Buckeye went up, Fountain Hills went up a little bit. This is an index, so it's uh, definitely showing some, we're at the bottom. Here's our active listings. Remember I've been saying back here, I think listings are going to start to come down because they do kind of seasonally. Well, we've seen the first dip here. So we need to watch now and say, okay, is this going to reverse itself? Are more people going to be forced to sell their homes if the economy tanks? And the short answer is yes, but it takes time. A recession shows up not this Monday, next Monday. It just shows up over time. People lose their jobs over time, and we'll just have to continue to watch these, these numbers. But mortgage rates, uh, the pressure for mortgage rates to go up is kind of disappearing. Days, on, days of inventory is kind of flattened out at about 88, 89 days, um, which is about 2.9 months, almost three months of, of supply. Not alarming, uh, but higher than where it has been. But homes are still selling. It depends on where you are. If you're Queen Creek, Maricopa, and Buckeye, it's taking you some, some time. Here's the Cromford Market Index that's measured each week, and we have gone from 100 to 96.5. So the only thing that you can glean out of this chart is it, it's not going up. It's still going down ever so slowly versus this one here and this one here. We're Now that we're bottom feeders, we're just kind of staying there, but not every market. And the uh, this is one that, you know how I like to look at that index? I'll see if I can find it here. I, I like to look at this supply and demand um, in the Cromford Market Index, but it's updated only once a month. And right here... I like to see if these are crossing. In other words, the red goes below the blue. Now you're going to see pricing pressure. It means that the demand has fallen below the supply, just like it did here in the middle. We saw prices come down, and we saw it happen here, which is 2014. Of course, we all know what happened during the big financial crisis. So what are we seeing now? Well, um, they didn't update that yet, so I just went in and looked. The the supply number says it's 74.2. The demand number says it's 73.9. So it has crossed. When that chart gets updated here in a couple of weeks or maybe this afternoon, I don't know when they do it, um, they have crossed. I think you're going to see some pricing pressure. But that pricing pressure could find some relief in the mortgage rates because mortgage rates uh, are not seeing any pressure to come up today. Now, 
talk about updating. Right now, this is just a survey that we do on MBS Highway, and it's uh, showing us a 6.4. That doesn't update in real time, so that'll update tomorrow. Uh, I tried reaching out to Pat this morning to see if he could join us and give us uh, some insights into what he's seeing in the live data, but uh, he hasn't uh, surfaced yet. Sometimes he's got webinars he does in the morning, and I can't uh, shake him off of that. So what do we look for? Well, obviously inventory. Will inventory go up? If Because bad news is, is good for rates. We had bad jobs data. They were expecting like 170,000 new jobs. We got 114,000 new jobs. That said, ooh, the central bank said, well, you know, we're looking like September. We'll probably begin um, our rate cuts. But it's all data dependent, so we're going to wait. Well, their data just changed this morning. As of 6 a.m. <laughs> so they're all huddled around on Zoom calls right now, trust me. And, uh, and then it depends on what the market does tomorrow. And so the bond market is jumping in and going, whoop, you know, we're not waiting for the rate cuts. We're, uh, you know, treasury yields are falling. And uh, so rates, our mortgage rates are going to come down. So we need to look and see what happens to inventory. I think the first thing you'll probably see if rates come down is not so much that buyer traffic increases, but refinancing will increase first. Remember all the marry the house, date the rate people? This is your shining moment, perhaps. Um, I'm not opposed to buying and refinancing later, don't get me wrong. I just didn't like the marketing edge of that, saying marry the house, date the rate. You don't know that rates are going to go down, so don't tell people that. Now that rates are going down, if you did buy and you were at a higher rate and you were one of the ones that got in in the high sevens, um, you're going to probably like how things look by Tuesday or Wednesday. And I think the refinancing activity will pick up way before buyer activity shows up in our, in our market. Many of you are waiting and you're waiting for rates to come down, but you're also waiting for home prices to come down. I don't know where your threshold is. Only you know that. So if you're seeing a window of opportunity where perhaps um, home prices do come down, uh, then maybe you'll jump in and we'll see buyer activity pick up. But it's been hanging at about 2,500 every seven days. So that's the first number I'm going to keep an eye on. And of course, compared to the inventory number, new listings. New listings are not growing. More people putting their homes on the market. In fact, Inventory is actually coming down because we have more buyer activity than we have new listings. Even though they're both really tiny numbers, the market's not getting flooded with inventory. It is a little heavier in the outlying areas, like I said, where there's new construction, which is Maricopa, Buckeye, and Queen Creek, and, uh, um, and areas of uh, um, surprise. So they're competing with new builds. Now, new build rates, um, geez, they're going to be bargains. If this continues. So this is one of those weeks where you're just going to want to stay tuned. I'll be back on Thursday. I think Pat and I are getting on at four o'clock because he's got a flight later on. So we can't be on at five. So make sure you hit that bell notification on this channel so you can know. And we'll get in and do a deep dive. We may even come in sooner, maybe perhaps uh, a Wednesday afternoon show just to recap things and see what's going on. But, uh, you know, this tells me Nobody's making a move this week. You think people were sitting on their hands last week, just watch and wait. People are going to sit on their hands now and go, man, this is nervous times. I'm going to wait and see what happens. I go back to the Dow Jones here for just a second and say, well, have we had much movement? Um, now we're only down 863 points. So they seem to have found the floor, and uh, but the floor is not good. Look at how far that went down there. This was just an ugly, ugly morning. And we've... We've, uh, we've seen this play before, and we've seen 800-point drops before. They don't end well. Uh, so that's why I say are good times or bad times turning into good times. I think a lot of you are going to be nervous. I think this is going to be something we need to watch. I keep repeating myself. Let's take a look at inventory and see where this goes. And uh, it'll be a fun little ride, won't it? And let's hope that we don't have war breaking out in the Middle East. That's the last thing we need. Um, it's just uh, I'm very stressful. I'm not liking it. But if you have any questions about the real estate market, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. And thanks for chiming in this morning. Take care.